In this grade 12 mathematics video, we are looking at the preparatory exam. We are officially preparing for the preparatory examination. Specifically, in this video, we are going to focus on paper one, and with that, we are looking particularly on the exam scope. So, what can you expect for the mathematics exam when it comes to paper one? So, these are the things that you need to go make sure that when you are revising, you have touched all of these. With the preparatory examination, as you know, we are looking at the full syllabus of grade 12, but there are some things that you need to make sure that you prioritize first, and one of them is counting and probability. That's, this is the topic that if I were in your shoes, I would start with. The reason for this is that this is a topic that you only covered in term 3. So this means that when you were writing your media exam in term 2, and when you were writing your first exam in term 1, this topic was not covered in either one of those examinations. So going into the preparatory examination, you can guarantee that this topic is going to be there and it's going to be tested. So I'm going to make sure that if I'm in your shoes, I start with this topic and I make sure that I understand this topic. I revise it, especially with question papers. So what are you looking at when it comes to this topic in particular? First, start revising the mutually exclusive events. Make sure that you know all the rules. You know when it comes to probability, what's most important is for you to know your rules, to know how to solve problems using the rules keeping the rules in mind if you know the rules it helps you solve at least half of the problem and then the rest is just you working out and solving for what's left right so you need to know what are mutually exclusive events how do you identify them and how do you solve problems surrounding them then also make sure that you understand the addition rule the complementary rule and the product rule you also need to make sure that you have covered independent and dependent events you also know the difference between the two of them then from there study your venn diagrams and your tree diagrams just understand how they work and how to solve problems using them then end your revision with fundamental counting principles the second topic that you covered in term 3 was finance growth and decay with finance growth and decay basically we are looking at a finance question we are calculating using a simple and a compound interest formula or rather the compound uh, growth and decay formula growth just basically means when the amount is going up and decay when the amount is going down that's just simply what it is you just need to know which formula you are using depending on whether you're dealing with growth or you are dealing with a dk and you also need to differentiate between the compound and the symbol interest then you also need to know that you are comfortable with calculating future annuities as well as present annuities this is one of those calculations where a lot of students struggle they struggle with determining which formula do i even use for future annuity and which one do i even use for present annuity so make sure that you get comfortable with knowing which formula to use because the formula should will be provided but the problem formula sheet on it doesn't tell you if this one is future and this one is present so make sure that you know how to identify both and differentiate between them then you also need to know how to calculate in your sinking funds and also calculating the value of n using logarithms so make sure that you are comfortable with the steps that are involved in that and you're also comfortable with using your calculator to do so then from there when it comes to loans make sure that you are comfortable with calculating outstanding balance the last payment as well as missed payments so make sure that you are comfortable with those calculations then you will end your revision with analyzing investment and loan options so, so this is where you will be given two options or three options and you are asked to make a choice between them using calculations in your calculations you will obviously have to show your workings as how you came to the decision of what is the best option out of the two or three that are given 
once you are done prioritizing everything that was covered in term three then you can go back to term one and start working your way up starting with algebraic expressions so on the scope the third topic is going to be algebraic expressions with algebraic expressions we are basically talking about solving for x now this is one of the basic questions that you will find in the very first few questions when you open your question paper so most likely in question one most people when they are studying they take it for granted and they do not study or practice the algebraic expression because they're just thinking it's solving for x yes it's only solving for x with regards to the algebraic expression in equations as well as in inequalities if you haven't practiced it you may find that you are struggling with something as simple as solving for x because it's not just as simple as solving for x you need to know what you're doing you need to know the rules of when you're taking a figure from one side to the other you need to remember those things and it's only through practice where you get that ability to always be careful not to misplace your signs and also when it comes to inequalities inequalities are surprisingly not easy for everybody so make sure that you study those rules and you understand them the fourth topic in your scope is number patterns starting with quadratic patterns with quadratic patterns i need to specify that you need to go make sure that you're comfortable with it i know elena is comfortable with their quadratic pattern if they are not struggling with finding their first differences and their second differences and they can also determine the nth term of the sequence get very comfortable with quadratic patterns in my opinion they are the easy question of number patterns from there look at your arithmetic geometric sequences as well as the series so make sure that you know how to deal with both and then also do sigma notation this is where you may need to put in a little more time in studying because a lot of learners does struggle with sigma notation i promise you it's a thing of practice you just need to give it in enough time uh, in terms of practicing for you to be able to master it and then from there we get to derivation as well as application with both of them we are looking at the sum of the arithmetic as well as sum of geometric series so make sure that you know how to apply and you also how know how to do your derivations when it comes to both of those hence we say derivation and application for both of them so this is the sn equations if if you need a reminder of what they look like the s standing for the sum so even when you're looking in your um formula sheet you also need to know that that as indicates uh, the sum whether it's a sum of arithmetic or sum of geometric series you just also need to again know the difference between the two of them and know which one you need to apply or which one you need to pick if you are trying to solve an equation because what the formula sheet doesn't do for you is tell you which one is which so your job as you study is to also make sure that you know how to identify each one from there we get to the topics that carry a lot of marks when it comes to your question paper and the first one of them is going to be functions and graphs so this topic is going to carry a lot more marks in your uh, question paper than the, all the other topics that we have already spoken about this far so you have to make sure that you invest more time into studying this topic so where do you start first you have to be able to determine the equations of each of the functions now in your question paper when you're dealing with the question most of the time you will be given two or more functions in one cartesian plane so you being able to identify which equation relates to each function is going to be the very first important thing that you need to be able to do because the worst thing you can do is use the wrong equation to try and solve for a different equation so you don't want to do that be able to determine the equation for each function then you have to be able to sketch all your functions now this is not a very common question in the question paper but i always say when you practice make sure that you are able to sketch because if you can sketch a function i doubt that you will be you you will struggle a lot with that function so you know that you have mastered a function 
if you can sketch it and you can sketch it accurately then we get to interpretation so this is before you even get to answer the question you have to be able to identify what is already there so what you have already been given meaning are you able to see in the Cartesian plane that you're given and the functions that you already provided are you able to see the horizontal and vertical length are you able to see the point of intersections are you able to see the average gradient the domain in the range what about the asymptotes the excesses of symmetry the turning point the minimum and the maximum values those are the things that we say you need to be able to interpret once you've done that then you can get to now starting to attempt to answer the questions now are you able to answer the questions that relate to a straight line or a linear function so you need to be able to know how a linear function works what is the standard format of a linear function or a straight line the same thing applies to a parabola what is the standard uh, format of a parabola or a quadratic function and are you able to find the x intercept the y-intercept are you also able to find the uh, turning point of your parabola also are you able to see if it's downwards facing or if it's upward facing so those are the things that you need to be able to calculate as you go on to a particular or the specific functions then you will do the same with exponential and logarithmic functions and then you will end your revision with inverse functions where you will look at the domain restrictions and how to determine them another high mark question in your question paper is going to be differential calculus with differential calculus you have to start by being able to factorize third degree polynomials and then from there you need to make sure that you understand the limit concept the reason for this is because when you do a derivative of a function using the limit you need to be able to know how all of that works with the formula and also making sure that you don't uh, as you move through the steps you are carrying the limit with you until you uh, correctly dispose of it in the last few steps so you need to be able to know how to move properly with those steps especially when you are dealing with the derivative using a limit so make sure that you understand the limit concept and then from there you can get into the derivative of a function so when you do this derivative of a function that's where you will be using or applying that limit concept not not forgetting what in my opinion I call the simpler derivatives this is the first principle derivatives as well as the second derivative in my opinion these are the simple derivatives that you should be able to do and it also would be painful if you do not know how to do this or rather you lose marks on these ones because they are supposed to be the uh, simple ones the first principle derivatives as well as the second derivatives they are supposed to be the very simple ones where you can use to get most of the marks that are going to come from this question from because remember this is one this is going to be one of the questions that carries the most amount of marks so you need to make sure that you are making the best of it so the best way to make the best of it is you can look at the first principle derivatives as well as the second derivatives as those go to questions where you know that you are guaranteeing yourself those marks but you can only guarantee yourself those marks if you are already comfortable with uh, calculating or other determining those derivatives then lastly you will end it by sketching and interpreting graphs of cubic functions so we know the differential calculus graphs you need to be able to interpret them and to sketch them uh, you never know if the question is going to require you to sketch if it does it's going to be a rare question but it, it, it that does not mean it will will not be there there are some questions where they will ask you to sketch but what's most important in my opinion is for you to be able to interpret because with interpreting that's what makes it simpler for you to be able to answer the questions that follow by interpreting is the same thing that i was talking about when i was talking about the topic of functions and graphs interpreting meaning that you are able to identify what is already there what you have already been given on paper so make sure that you are comfortable with that in total you will have six topics in your paper one the first one being counting principles and probability then second finance growth and decay 
third algebraic expression this one includes equations and inequalities then you have number patterns at number four number five is functions and graphs and number six is the one that we concluded with which is differential calculus and that concludes your paper one preparatory exams oh. youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below